Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back in to the garage. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the replacement of the O2 sensors on my 2000 Toyota 4Runner SR5. This O2 sensor issue became quite a big problem when it came down to researching exactly what part numbers I needed. And I don't know if you guys out there have experienced similar frustrations, but I'm kind of a research guy. Uh, and when I started to research this issue online, there was a lot of different information out there and a lot of different confusion out there surrounding which O2 sensor went where and what part number we could use on our 2004 runners. A lot of this came from the fact if you drive a two wheel drive or if you drive a four wheel drive, if you have a California emission or a non California emission vehicle. And there's a lot of information out there, both in the ownership forums on Forerunner websites and also just through other websites such as Denso's website. So one thing that I hope this video can help you guys in is being more confident in how to identify which part number you need when you go to replace the O2 sensors on your third generation Forerunner. So a little bit of my experience here. I went on to the Denso website I put in all of my appropriate information for my specific Forerunner, and it actually said that I needed two of the exact same part number. And that part number was this Denso 234-4162. When you look at this on the website, one of the main key identifiers to this part number is that it contains a 10.5 inch wire length. And that's the wire that comes off of the O2 sensor, eventually making it to the electrical connection on your Forerunner. Now, that didn't make sense to me because I've been underneath my Forerunner a lot, and I certainly knew that one of my O2s, which in this case is the downstream O2 sensor, really seemed to have a longer wire length on it. And so I did a little bit more research, even though Denso's website told me, you need two of these. So I actually came to find that the appropriate part for my downstream was the Denso 234-4153. That part number, if you look up the specs, has an 18.5 inch wire length. And that was the appropriate exact match and exact replacement for my downstream O2 sensor. The 234-4162 was the exact replacement for my upstream O2 sensor. So be careful when you're looking online and ordering the correct O2 sensor and ordering the parts. Sometimes, depending on where you're buying them, it might be a hassle to return them. So you just want to you just want to be safer. OK, so what I would suggest is get underneath your rig, take a look around at your O2 sensors, pay close attention to the wire length and then do the appropriate research in regards to your VIN number or what part you might be able to find. Another tip is if you get underneath your Forerunner and you might be able to read at the base of the O2 sensor, the existing part number, whether it came from Toyota or Denso, or Bosch, or another part possibly from another manufacturer. There should be etched in that stem of the O2 sensor, the part number. So it wouldn't take too much time to get under there, maybe unbolt it from the exhaust itself, twist it around, try to get that part number off of there, and take a little time up front to save you a lot of time and headache on the back end. So hopefully some of my shared experience will help you guys kind of navigate the problems that you can have up front in finding the appropriate O2 sensor for your third gen Forerunner. So with that information out of the way, I will like to report that I was super happy to get this done. I replaced both my O2 sensors at the same time, which I highly recommend. And as a bonus that you won't see on this video, I also cleaned out the uh, MAF or the mass airflow sensor and replaced my air filter. I kind of wanted to do all of those things to make certain that I was given just that fresh start to the flow. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope it helps you out. It's a simple and it's an easy thing to do. Don't be afraid of it, attack it, get them both done at the same time, and most importantly, find the right part numbers. All right, guys, hope you enjoy the video. Till next time. So here's what we're gonna need to complete our job today. Not a lot, this is a simple task. We've got both O2 sensors that we need. We have some seafoam deep creep, shop towels, some gloves, and a ratchet with both a uh, deep and a shallow 12 millimeter socket. And that's gonna be to remove the nuts on the O2 sensors and to tighten it back up once we install the new O2s. 
So as you can see for my application on my 4Runner, we have the Denso part numbers 2344162 and 2344153. The 4162 has the 10.5 inch wire length and the 4153 has the 18.5 inch wire length. The uh, 4153 in this case is my downstream and the 4162 is my upstream. So let's get it going. All right, guys, we are underneath the 4Runner and the first step I'm gonna take here is to spray these nuts with some penetrating lubricant. I'm gonna be using the Seafoam Deep Creep, that product I've had good success with. And uh, so that's what we're gonna be using. Now I would recommend loosening these nuts um, after taking the vehicle for a drive, warming everything up. It's been uh, my experience on O2 sensor replacements that these nuts break free a little bit easier when everything's warmed up. So as you can see here, this is the upstream O2 sensor. This is the one that on the Denso part uh, shows a 10 inch, um, I'll call it the 10 inch cable there, essentially coming from the O2 sensor. If we follow this downstream, uh, you're gonna see the downstream O2 sensor, which on my 4Runner uh, shows the 18 inch cable. Uh, and you can see why the connection is right here and you need a longer cable than what is provided on the upstream O2 sensor, um, the Denso model number. So we're going to go ahead and spray these down here again using the Seafoam uh, Deep Creep product and we're going to come over here to our upstream. And get those sprayed off. Okay, so we're gonna let this sit here for about five to 10 minutes, come back and loosen everything up and get them swapped out. All right, we are at the downstream O2 sensor and after I spray the lubricating oil, uh, that deep creep, essentially what I'm gonna do here is just wipe these uh, nuts a little dry that's just something, man. It's not totally necessary, but it's just something I have to do. So now we're going to uh, loosen these up. Super easy on the first one. And super easy here on the second one. So. Once these are loosened, you can, and you should be able to, unless yours is in a really bad situation, uh, you can just take them off the rest of the way here by hand. Now, once you have those off, your O2 sensor is now free. What you're gonna see here is this bracket, um, excuse me, gasket. That gasket is going to be, um, there's gonna be a new gasket provided to you in the package with your O2 sensor, so we'll see that in a minute. But uh, you're gonna replace that with the new gasket. Let's take a look at this old one, causing me issues. It's pretty toasted, pretty toasted. So uh, yeah, things, things should run a lot better and be a lot better once we get that replaced. So we're gonna go ahead and take this gasket off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this surface here is nice and clean. You don't want any scratches or deep gouges in this surface because you want that gasket to sit cleanly against the surface so that there's no uh, leaks whatsoever once you uh, install the new O2 sensor and torque it down. So I am gonna just basically clean this off nice and easy um, and then we're gonna get this uh, disconnected here from the electrical connection point. Okay, so this is our electrical connector here on the downstream O2 sensor. It actually is connected, um, as you can see here, into a cross frame piece. And, um, and this one's pretty easy to disconnect. So as you can see, the connector here slides into this channel. So all you have to do, um, there's two ways of doing it. Um, I'll show you both ways, but this, the, the actually, the, the part that you need to compress is on top, but it's just easier for me to see. And I'll show it to you guys the way I do it is I just pull with some pressure and you see that actually slides into this piece as you can see that's what keeps it connected so if you just pull with some pressure there there you see your tab right here 
and we're gonna push down on that tab and that will allow us to pull this out, which is the O2 connector. So we're gonna push down and pull out. And there we go. I was able to do that one-handed here as I hold the camera on the other hand. So really not difficult as you can see. I'm gonna, uh, you, <laughs> I'm gonna leave this piece um, actually seated back here inside that channel um, and keep it in place there until we install the new O2 sensor. All right, so now we are at our upstream O2 sensor and uh, just wipe those nuts off. You know, this one um, gives me a bit of concern. It looks pretty toasted there. I like my barbecue with a little bit of a burnt in there, but uh, not, not my nuts, not my nuts. Um, so I've switched over to my 12 millimeter shallow socket and man, honestly guys, I don't know if you could tell, but as I put that on, the nut rotated and look at that. It was, it was already loose. Um, that's not good. That could have easily caused some of my problems with having some leaks and some escapes there of air with that gasket so but hey i haven't replaced these in many years so we're gonna replace them and holy cow <laughs> two two for two i i don't know how to feel about this other than kind of kind of frustrated um and upset that both of these nuts were that loose that's definitely aggravating. All right, let's see how this looks. And yeah, <laughs> regardless of how loose those were, um, I think we all can agree that I'm happy to be, um, I'm happy to, to be swapping that out today. All right, so we've got the gasket here that is coming off and we're gonna do the same thing with the upstream. Um, I can't get my head up there as uh, as good of a visual, but I'm just gonna clean it up nice and um, Just make sure that you know, there's nothing there on the surface when my new gasket gets on there So all right, let's get a different angle and we'll show you the connection here. All right guys I think I've probably got you the most ridiculous angle that I could um, you can actually see the studs here for the upstream O2 sensor so to kind of give you some orientation my camera is on the passenger side um, right by the wheel well essentially pointing towards here the middle of the vehicle and I'm giving you this understanding because if you look from just directly underneath uh, this connection is really hidden uh, behind this so it's a little more difficult to look at it if you're looking straight up from the ground in this case if you just kind of get your your orientation correct um, your body, your visual. This is really held in the exact same way as I described on the O2 sensor. You can see that bracket um, that is being held in. So I'm gonna pull towards me and that releases it free from really the, the housing, I guess, if you will. Um, and then we have the same exact connection here. I've just ripped that glove wide open. You know you're working when you're ripping these cheap gloves, man, but I kind of like using them, so. All right, so we're gonna have the same thing here. We're gonna, we're gonna push this tab down. I'm doing this one-handed, so not the best visual here, guys, but we're gonna push this tab down and release that connection. So I'm gonna turn the video off, do this two-handed quickly, and then we'll go on to the next step. Here we have the uh, the old O2 sensors and the brand new replacements. And as you can see, we've laid out these wire links and they are going to work. So super excited about that. So I just thought I'd show you guys a quick little side-by-side uh, -side comparison of the old versus the new. Here we're looking, looking at uh, Denso 2344162. As you can see, quite a nice difference between the gaskets and uh, and also the actual sensor itself. And here we are looking at Denso 2344153. An interesting part here to note is that the circumference there or diameter of the tip of the sensor uh, seems to be uh, thinner on the newer model, but that's probably just because it's a newer model. I don't even know how old that sensor is. 
So um, I'm excited about this. You know, here's one thing I would suggest always when replacing O2 sensors is to do them together. I have probably mentioned this before, but I will mention it again. You know, a lot of times you'll get a fault or a code on just one of the sensors like your downstream. Uh, however, I don't see any reason to replace just one. You know, you replace one of them and then you've got one really old one in there that you might not have even checked for quality and you got a brand new one in there. And, you know, to me, it just seems pointless. I think for peace of mind, you should replace both of them at the same time. And then you know, hey, this is my maintenance log. I've replaced both my O2 sensors and I feel good for X amount of time. Um, obviously for however long they last. Uh, I just I just think it's a better better practice, best practice. I know sometimes people can't do that for financial reasons, but you know, these two O sensors together were not that bad and and honestly, um, I think it's doable. So that's just a recommendation that I would uh, I would make to all you guys out there or gals that are replacing these O2 sensors. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to see if I can approach these nasty old nuts and try to clean them up a little bit. Um, and honestly, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here because I'm gonna go online and I'm gonna buy four replacement nuts. And eventually after this video is done, when they come in, I'm just gonna replace them with brand new nuts. Um, I would definitely suggest doing that. I just didn't get them in, um, in time for this and I wanted to go ahead and swap out the O2 sensors. All right, enough talking, let's get to it. All right, so I've got this nylon bristle brush and that's because all I wanna do is, again, very light cleaning on the surface here. I don't want anything to scratch or damage the surface and I'm not looking to get too deep, but I am going to, as you can see, just clean the surface off of all the surface dust and any kind of contaminants. Anything that might be on there that um, would cause me not to have as good of a seal with that gasket. I don't have anything on my shop rag. I don't have any type of solvent or anything. Just wiping it dry. Nothing deep there. All right, so we've got our gasket here and you can see there's two different sides here. Um, I put this side with more of the metal exposure uh, down against the exhaust pipe itself there. All right. And then you kind of want to pay attention probably to the orientation of how you put your O2 sensor down um, into the pipe just based upon how the wire is and what's easier here. So we're gonna put this O2 sensor here where our wire is nice and relaxed going towards our electrical connection. All right, next we're gonna get our nuts and we're gonna finger thread them back on. I believe that uh, the torque spec here is 14 foot pounds. Um, I could probably get my torque wrench on the downstream O2 sensor. And I do not believe I could get it on my upstream. So I might come back and torque these down to spec. Maybe make myself feel a little better. But for now, we are going to torque them down nice and firm by hand. Here we go. Definitely don't want to go over torque here um, and cause yourself a much, much bigger problem. All right, so new downstream O2 sensor installed. Let's get it hooked up, change our camera angle here and uh, get it done. All right, we are back at the electrical connection for a downstream O2 sensor. And this one's gonna be pretty cut and dry. Only one way you can install it. There we go. Once you hear that snap, that click, that means you're seated and connected. And uh, hey guys, our O2 sensor on the downstream is complete and we are ready to go to the upstream. Let's get it done. All right, so we're here on the upstream now. 
and we're working in tighter quarters on this one but once again i'm taking this nylon brush and just loosening anything on the surface getting it out of there All right, feel good enough with that. I'm gonna wipe it down here. Okay. Once again, we're gonna get our gasket and um, as you can see, there's one side that has more material. The metal side, we'll call it. We're going down against the exhaust pipe. Get our new O2 sensor and we're gonna install it. There we go. That's easy enough. This one is the the shorter wire. So not really much. Um, not really much to deal with here in regards to wire management. All right, we're going to finger tighten these nuts down onto the studs. Once again, I still can't believe um, I still can't believe how loose these were. I really can't. I mean, they were basically coming off, so it's not good. Not a lot of room to work with here on the ratchet, as you can see. This is basically all the room I have to work with, but we're going to get it tight as I can. That's good. Now we got to flip the ratchet around the other way. And uh, equally not a lot of room to work with here. But little by little, we're going to get it torqued down here. Yeah, that's good. All right, feel good about that. So we've got the nuts torqued down. Now let's get this uh, electrical connection made. I'm going to change my angle here for you guys again. All right, so you guys may remember I left this one here hanging loose on purpose. And there's really only one way this can connect. Um, you see that little peg right there sticking off of the connector in the middle by my thumb? That one actually is what seats in the top here, and that's what you hear that snap or that click that you heard from the last um, downstream installation. So I'm going to see if I can do this one-handed to show you guys, but... I think at this point you get the idea regardless. Yep, I think I can do this. There we go. And there you are, you heard it seat in. So now that's solid. Now we gotta get it connected back into that groove and I'm gonna show you guys that. All right, so here we are. That right there is our groove. And once again, um, that on the bottom is what slides into right there into that keeper piece that's into the vehicle and just like that we're done upstream is installed downstream is installed let's turn the engine on and see what we got All right, guys, we're gonna plug into our OBD port right down there, turn the ignition to the on, and let's see what we got. Hey, success. No codes and no check engine light. This job is done and uh, man, I couldn't be happier. All right, on to the next.